Okay, so this is the um, 2014 tour pack mount detachable on the 2013 motorcycle and you can see it fits just fine if you have the four point setup the points where these connect here and the detachable are they're they're perfect they're in the same spot so <clears throat> even though it doesn't cross reference it that way in the um, parts catalog that 2014 tour pack detachable mounting uh, rack is what you need of course these are from a 2013 the four point because those would be different and also if you were to put on a permanent rack as opposed to the detachable those would not be the same So I'm doing this video because really the the primary issue with the tour pack, now once I got past the fact that the 2014 tour pack will fit the 2013 bike, is that the uh, the lights, the wraparound LED lights wouldn't be compatible with this older electrical system. So loving those lights and being willing to accept that challenge. I had to take it upon myself to, to see if I could get it to work. So as I thought about it, all I could come up with was the fact that I have LED lights on the rear already. Uh, these are inserts that, that go in, but they, they have a little pigtail off of this LED disc that goes into the normal socket and twists in just like you would with a normal um, tail light bulb. But the piece that it has, um, to prevent them from flashing rapidly because the, the LEDs are different than the normal electrical load, therefore they, they flash super rapid, is you have this, this other component here called a load, I believe it's called a load leveler. And really it's this, it's from this pigtail to the, uh, to the white component here. And what it does, I don't know if it just acts as a, uh, as a sink for uh, for heat or what and it allows the blinkers to go with the LEDs to go at a normal flash rate So I thought to myself as long as I can get downstream from the bikes Intelligence or computer system So that it thinks it's powering LEDs anyways Why couldn't I tap into that and power the LEDs on the tour pack? There's a component that Harley puts on here that that has to do with with the um, load, the electrical load, and it's gonna be hard to see, but it's behind this rear tail fascia light here. And it's a black component back here. It's got electrical connector on each end. So by the time you come out of that black component, you have not only come out of my load leveler up here, the white component that I added when I put in the LED, aftermarket LEDs, so now you're, you're, you're powered, you've, you've got everything essential to give you rear flashers from the factory, plus you've got the load leveler. So I figured if I tapped in after this last electrical component and prior to the actual bulb, that that would be my best solution. So what I did was I took apart these, I started uh, testing the wires, shooting the wires and finding out which ones, which color combinations went to what for the flashers and for the tail lights and for the brake lights. And those are the schematics that I'll be showing you in this presentation. While you're shooting those wires, you're gonna be um, working with your, your ohm meter or your volt meter, and you're gonna need a little bit of extra room to, to work around back there, because uh, you're, you're gonna be cutting back uh, insulation on wires and um, you don't wanna mess up. So. Uh, I would recommend the first thing to do would be to remove the fascia converter module, that's the black component. And to get to it, you've got to take off this, this uh, plastic cover. So once you pop the plastic cover off the bottom, just get a screwdriver under these two little tabs here and pop it off the little white tabs from the light. Uh, you rotate it up and you get it off the top of them. There's one 7 16 bolt in the back of 
the license plate cover that the uh, that the wiring after it comes out the right side of that goes up to the it holds it off of the rear wheel while it makes its way up to the lights so okay so here's the uh, light assembly removed um, pretty easy to take out uh, just a torx head screw here and here this is the top part of it and the black part here is the fascia converter module there's not much room for the wire to come passing over the top of that with a connector there and, and clear it passes all the way over the top and comes out the other side this is the depiction after I shot the wires and figured out which ones uh, go to which part of the tail light the way to view this is the connector on the left would actually rotate it around and go into the socket shown on the right um, or otherwise uh, you could view it as the back side of the connector but either way um, you'll want to make sure you're using the appropriate diagram for your particular application and uh, annotate appropriately which lights or which connectors specifically which wires because those are what you're going to tap into go to the ground for the lights which ones are essentially your tail light leads or the dim connectors and which ones are your bright leads or your blink and stop connectors in the process of shooting the wires you'll trim back the, the black covering from the harness to expose them um, and then once you've got it sorted out which ones are appropriate for your application about an inch back from the harness I began trimming the wire about a quarter inch of insulation being careful not to cut through the wire and as you can see here I staggered them um, had the blues pretty much side by side the purples side by side and the blacks side by side about a quarter inch trimmed and then with my wires that are going to be going forward ensuring that you have plenty of length of wire uh, with excess so you can trim it back once you connect it on the other end to your tour pack harness uh, I trimmed about a quarter inch off the end of those uh, twist them around the exposed portion of the appropriate wire uh, put a little flux on there and soldered them as you see here on the blue one and then uh, once those are all complete tape each individual one and then continue to tape them uh, completely back together and you can see that they're aiming forward so that they can go back across that fascia converter module underneath the cover flatly side by side uh, because there's as we already shown not much room to work with so once I had those spliced I re-taped it, picky buddy taped them across the top, have them come forward nice and neat and flush, and then over here, pairing up with these other wires and working their way up to the front. So there they just follow the other wires with the zip ties, working their way up to the front. I've already got these taped up. You can see here, uh, here's where the one goes up to the top. That goes to the tail lights and to the, and to the license plate light. Um, this is the, it goes on the bolt right there behind them. That's the one seven sixteenths. And so what you end up with is when this is all put together, these going in the input and the output of that electrical component. And then these are the flat wires that transit underneath the plastic cover that will cover it all and protect it from all these elements. Side. 
here, and then that goes flat across. These, I don't know where these got to go behind the, the tangs. This one is not going to be as difficult initially because it's still got some movement up here. Put this clamp up on the on that screw, and then I can work it down around that. So it's hooking around it. You can see how this is coming back across, humping up over. And then same thing on this side. So the one that comes straight in is tight enough that it doesn't need to go around it. But this one is going to go around it, and that's good because that's going to just help keep this flat across the top of there. So you can see that's nice and flat across there. This, the top two, are the narrow holes. The bottom two are the wider ones. And the top two hook up over the top. There we go. So those are on the top. And then you can see here they just, because the wire's in there, it's a little harder to get them to pull, pull down and snap. It's got all that pressure underneath there. There's that one. And there's that one. All I've got to do is make sure those wires are wrapped around there. They are. Put this back on there. Passing that on there. All right. All nice and neat. Tucked up in there. The challenge on the other end of this was to figure out what the particular pins on the LED wraparound lighting uh, controlled. And with a lot of uh, trepidation, uh, I did was able to figure it out. Uh, and starting with the ground in the middle, as the middle of the five pins, I would test each lead um, with just the battery's 12 volt power and see what came on. And what I found out is, as you see depicted here, that when I put the 12, positive 12 volts on that top left pin, it made the uh, left blinker section of the, of the LED lighting come on bright. So as viewed from the rear, the left one would come on bright. Uh, whenever I would do it up at the top right prong, the right section would come on bright, and the bottom left prong would make the center section come on bright and then touching it to the bottom right portion or prong, it would make the entire LED lighting system come on dim. So the difficult part here was to sort out which ones from a purely two light system from the factory I could use to then set up really what amounts to a three light system on the LED wraparound lights. So using the notes that I had taken from behind the fender, it turns out that the blue tail lights, which are dim and therefore doesn't matter whether it's left or right, uh, could be combined into one wire coming forward, though I had it come forward as two until uh, just prior to when I wired into the tour pack wiring harness. But essentially, those two blues end up going to that one post at the bottom right to bring on the entire tail light section dimly. The two purple wires, keeping track of which one was a left bright and a right bright from behind the fender, allowed me to go to the top left and right posts on the LED wraparound so that I could keep track of my stop and flashers for the left and right. And then finally the black grounds that came forward, again I brought forward both of them until prior to the harness, um, but they could have been combined and come forward as one because they end up going into that center post. So the only thing remaining was to find a way to get that center section to come on bright. And that was a challenge because it was separate from left or right. Regardless of which one came on, left or right, I needed the center one to come on uh, every time I hit the brakes. So I had to find a positive brake 
lead um, or source to, to bring that back into the harness. Looking at the schematic, I found the brake relay and saw that it normally would go to uh, a tour pack harness if, if I had one wired in. So I figured if I could find that accessory connector, I might be able to find that yellow and or that red with yellow stripe wire that comes from it. So I found that under the left side access panel next to the fuse block. And before actually tapping into it, I wanted to be sure. So either using a test light or a voltmeter, you can test that to make sure that when you apply the brakes that you're getting that positive 12 volt lead out of there. This connector, as I was showing you, the yellow and red that comes out of there, that is the brake line uh, that gives you the brake light from the schematic and I attached a wire to that. It's my brown one here, not, not this skinny brown one that's part of the, their connector, but the thicker one. And I bring it back, I just brought it alongside here and buddy taped it all the way back to the point where I want to reverse course and then cross over to my harness and then come forward as, as part of the harness here. And with that last wire now uh, attaching to that bottom left post, it'll allow you to have the uh, ability to light up that center section when applying the brakes. So I did with the antenna using a relocation kit so that I could have some of the hardware is I just unthreaded the, the antenna back through here and then where it comes out of this harness from the front. I just fed it instead of up over the wheel well, it feeds up back in behind here and pops out through the top. It's hard to believe that when you buy a wraparound tail light from the factory that it wouldn't come with a template for how to install it. Um, so I kind of had to do this one uh, on the fly. And essentially what I did was, to keep everything straight, was the three measurements pictured here. Uh, from the top edge of the tour pack to the top of the boss, the embossments for the antennas, um, I measured down about three-eighths of an inch and marked it on the tour pack. Uh, but then when locating the holes to drill for the actual screws that go in, uh, it's very important that you keep this straight, measure it, double-check it, triple-check it because not only do you have that three eighths from the top of the tour pack to the boss, you have to add the additional number two here, which was about an eighth of an inch for me. And then from there down to the actual location of the hole. So you're adding those three measurements and then measuring from the top of the tour pack down to your hole. For the horizontal measurements, I drew a center line on the inside of the tour pack, uh, found the center and drew a vertical line uh, and you could do the same thing on the inside of the LED lights. And then that way I could measure left and right of center to locate the holes horizontally, if you will, uh, for every one of them. And then I could mark them on the inside of the tour pack and do my drilling as appropriate. It's been a lot of back and forth and measuring um, and then now drilling. And the part I'm trying to do now is get the connector this big square piece right here, the hole for that that goes under the antenna hole. And so it's been a lot of eyeballing and drawing the square that I believe I'll need. And then now I've pre-drilled some smaller holes from the inside. Pretty much on all these I took a, a really small drill and drilled from the inside first because I wanted to find out where I would start from the outside. I didn't want to be drilling with a big drill from the inside and popping the paint out on the outside. So went in with a little one, created a small little pilot hole, then came around from the outside um, with the bigger drill and, and put the size hole in there that I wanted. Same thing especially for this, this half inch hole that I did here for the antenna and then now these that I'm getting ready to do for the, um, for the connector, the electrical connector that'll go through there. So put the, I put my half inch drill bit uh, up against the inside in here the half inch bit so that I could see where it was coming with relation to the edges that I had drawn and then I pre-drilled it with this small bit here so that the pilot part of the half inch bit 
we'll be able to start pre-drilling from the outside. So here goes that. And then Now that it's poked through, I'm just going to run it on up slowly and make sure it don't take a big chunk of plastic. But because I've come from the outside, it does do a lot better. It seems if it's going to remove one, it'll be from the inside, not, not from the outside. And be careful not to pick away at this stuff here and peel your paint off. Okay, so the last one there where I paused actually did take a little bit of a chunk out um, on the inside, but it's inside that square, and like I say, it's on the inside, so it didn't chunk off any of the paint. I've got a one of these quick disconnect, easy lock cutting, and it's a thin cut. You want to use that to try to not try, but to get this out. methodical process and I've got it almost cut out so now I'm going to uh, now I use a hacksaw to clean out the corners of it and bring it out of there so I don't know if I've ever done it done anything so nerve-wracking in my life um, I'm just holding the blade and I've got the teeth facing uh, inward towards me I don't know if you can see it but because again I don't want to be pushing outward on my strokes here to push the paint off. Okay. Circles are much easier. Just taking a razor blade. Here, it's what I've been doing on all the holes to clean up the plastic around the edges of them. To see if it was correctly done. Voila. Nice. I might have to uh, have to see when I actually you know what I bet I'm gonna have to make it bigger because the connectors rather than guessing let me just see nope it sits inside so it looks like I might just have to trim just a little bit off this side here so I can clear the, the little clip but other than that it's good to go Outstanding because I referenced everything off the top and how far down I wanted it. I put it about three eighths of an inch down from the top um, to the tops of the uh, the antenna embossing there, where they rise up just a little bit. Not the not the actual bolt, but the the plastic itself. Um, three eighths of an inch down to that on each side here, and that was my reference. And then I was able to measure down here, measure from center, left and right to locate him. Um, but again, these, I, because the, uh, oh, it's pretty level, I might still be able to drop down and get that measurement this way. It's the front aft one that'll be kind of hard since I have a curve here and not a real good true surface to measure from. Okay, so I didn't have a whole lot of luck trying to locate the side holes here, so 
got an idea online that somebody had done something like this with an older model. So I put some tape on, the uh, just some painter's tape there, put the light on there in the rear holes, and then just marked around the edge of it so that I could get the, uh, the outline. And then I took the actual light itself, laid a piece of paper up against it, and then on the other side I traced around the edge of it and then marked the whole locations. So now what I'll do is take this, wrap it around here, and line it up, and then I'll have my whole locations. But what I'm going to do first is um, mark the line here with a darker marker so it'll show through the paper better. I'm going to try to get it lined up. Okay, so I've pre-drilled the pilot holes now. And so now I'm going to go in with the my final size here for the bolts. Push all that flush and then come in from the inside. Clean those up a little bit. Uh, as far as the screws for the for the um, wraparound light, I called Harley and when you look at the instructions, it shows the screws as necessary, but it doesn't give them a part number and it tells you that they're not available. Um, as part of the kit. So I called Harley and they looked them up and they cross-checked them and referenced them and found them. Uh, and they were so hard to come by that none of the stores in the U.S. had them and they would have to be a special order. And But he gave me the designations that they were a, a number eight by nine sixteenths. Let's see, that's the washers. Number eight by nine sixteenths by um, 16. So that would be a, I got these pan head stainless ones that are eight by five eighths. So it's close enough to nine sixteenths. And it doesn't have the 16 thread count, 16 threads per inch, but not really important because the holes are self, they, they don't have any threads in them, they're plastic. So when you go into the light, you're forming your own threads anyways. And the ones I've put in so far seem to be tightening up just fine. So that's how I'm going with it. Once you uh, get the correct connector from Harley, uh, you can ask them for the appropriate pins to solder onto the ends of your wires and connect into the back side of the connector here and make it a, a, professionally, um, a professional job. But you have, uh, for me, the colors of my wires I brought forward may differ for you. It's all just a matter of keeping them straight. So the brown one for me, the thick brown one, came from the yellow uh, striped red wire for the uh, center brake signal. The thin red ones uh, in the center are my directionals that came from the purple left and right um, wires from the rear fender. The black wire is the grounds that came forward from the back. Um, however, I didn't need to bring two forward. Those get combined and go into this one port the blue wire at the back became my green wire up here which is for the tail lights or the dim lights and again just like the grounds those can get combined into this one wire and then there's the thick red wire that i added which goes to the power port um, which is non-functional because uh, i'm still looking for the proper place to connect so i can attach it to the accessory switch uh, but additionally the power port uh, requires that you have the rear speakers on your tour pack to attach to. So um, I actually added those later and the additional harness that goes from the radio to the tour pack, but that's beyond the scope of this video and not included here. So at this point, you've got everything you need coming forward. So with the purchase of the harness, the appropriate for that tour pack so that you have that, that five prong connector going into the LED light, 
you now just have to plug into that harness that you procured and everything should line up as long as you've double, triple checked everything for the pinouts behind the LED lights uh, coming from your six-way connector. Here's my connectors I've put on here. Uh, this is the one right here that has the, the six prong, the actual connector to the harness that goes to the tour pack. And then this is my modification or what I'm using for the, for the uh, antenna. Just gonna screw in from the relocation kit, the splicer one that has them actually screwing on both ends of it. And that's gonna be how I connect that. This is the splicer where the antenna that comes, my piece of antenna that comes out through the, the grommet here and comes across, connects to the splicer. And then the splicer connects to my other piece of antenna line that I showed you. And then these are the two connectors, the four prong for the speakers and the six prong that goes to the plug outs inside for the lights. Here's my splicer with the antenna. So this antenna line that I've got coming up through the harness here that I brought forward like I showed you, this is all the original length of what used to go to the rear factory antenna. All I did was take off the little piece of metal that's clamped around it that holds it at a 90 degree angle and then that allows it to straighten out and then with the splice from the antenna relocation kit I'm good to go there and I just tighten it up and then this end uses the one that came with the uh, the uh, the harness for the the tour pack so the only thing you got to be careful is is the knurling here you don't want that to get against your paint so I've got the rest of it taped up pretty good but this part here I've got to watch and make sure it stays up there I'll probably end up putting a piece of cloth or tape around it or something if I'm, if I'm not going to be taking this off and on very much. But uh, here's my six prong connector. This is the one that I made. Here's the one from the harness where I got them sized to go together. Just right there. And then of course the one for the additional speaker speakers. So got them all situated up here where they'll be able to tuck away real nice cover that will go on them when the seat's on here to keep it all hidden from view and then I've just got it tucked around the side here under this this post you know, for the uh, the seat rails here so it just comes up under here and wraps forward and that pretty much with the exception of my power port is the finished product